It took me a surprisingly long time to get into this series. I loved the shit out of MGSV, so in theory, Hitman should have been the perfect game for me. Well, actually, thanks to a series of kinda bad experiences with blood money, and because the episodic model of the 2016 game really threw me off, I held off on playing the new series for a long time, but I finally bought Hitman 1 and 2 in, I think around 2019, and I had a blast, but I didn't actually complete either of those games. In fact, I only got through the first real level in Hitman 1. So when I made the decision to revive this channel and started looking for new games in 2021 to cover, Hitman 3 came up pretty early on because it was releasing early in the year, and I'd had a good experience with the first game in the series, and plus I'd finally have an excuse to actually finish one of these games. So I bought Hitman 3, didn't preload it because I couldn't preload it, I don't know why, since EGS apparently does support preloads now, I guess it just wasn't an option for Hitman 3. Launched the game, and I was immediately greeted with the Progress Carryover website. EO made this so people could carry over their progress and import entire levels into Hitman 3 from Hitman 1 and 2. This is kind of a godsend on paper because most PC players own the first two games on Steam, but not on EGS, which would normally make it impossible to transfer content over to the new game. The thing is though, on launch at least, this website was kind of impossible to use. On day one, not only was the whole website overloaded, but the whole process was overcomplicated, especially because I didn't already have an EO account. I had to trudge my way through a laggy, half-broken website being crushed under obviously immense demand. Then I found out I needed to make my EO account, so I did that. Then I learned I needed to link my Steam account, which I did. Then I went through the whole progress carryover process again, only to learn that I also needed to link my Epic Games account, so I did that. Then I tried to go through progress carryover again, only to see that the server hadn't seen that I linked my Epic Games account. At this point, I had spent like 40 minutes just trying to get my shit carried over, so I decided, fuck it, I'm not playing Hitman 1 or 2 right now anyways, I'll just play through Hitman 3. The only problem with that, though, is that if you carry over your progress later, all of the progress you made in Hitman 3 gets wiped, which, as you can imagine, is immensely frustrating. But I decided I'd bite the bullet, the levels are designed for replays anyways, and I just won't put so much time into the new levels that I get disappointed when all of my progress goes away. And that's kind of unfortunate, because you can blow through this entire game in about 6 hours if you want to. If you do that, you'll probably find that the game is a little bit mediocre, it's kinda slow and boring with not that much payoff. Although it is a little bit unique in that it's a social stealth game, you will be disappointed if you play this like a normal game. However, here's the thing about Hitman, especially the new trilogy and also this new game. Every single level is designed to be replayed dozens of times over. Each time you finish a level, you unlock new gear, new starting locations, new disguises, and new places to stash things. And each level plays completely differently based on all of those things. Where you're starting, what your disguise is, what you're carrying on you, what you have stashed, and where you've stashed it. There's also these things called mission stories, which act as little side quests, which you find by simply walking around, exploring, taking in the sights, and listening to any and all dialogue that shows up in the subtitles. Usually your targets are very difficult to get to, since they're surrounded by dozens of guards and people who will recognize you and turn you away before you can even get close to them. Mission stories present an opportunity where your target becomes vulnerable. Simply follow a few kind of easy steps and you've got a chance to kill your target without arousing any suspicion. Although, what I like about them is that even at the end of the questline, there's still a bit of setup you have to do. For example, to kill this person using a photo shoot, you still have to create a puddle of water and expose a wire without being seen, and you have to do it before the target actually gets there. Now that being said, you don't have to follow any mission stories if you don't want to or if you can't find them. The game is designed well enough so that its existing mechanics do the job just fine. You can use disguises to get into places you wouldn't normally have access to. You can hide bodies in lockers and trunks where they'll never be seen. You can use a medic poison to bring someone to a bathroom or lethal poison to kill them outright. You have tools like screwdrivers, wrenches, and crowbars to sabotage things. 
and kill people using accidents, and of course you have a selection of guns and knives to kill people the old-fashioned way. You can even just go loud with an assault rifle, but that's honestly not a good idea since shooting feels awful and movement is clunky. The only real issue I have with Hitman 3 is that it doesn't feel distinct enough from the last two games. It sort of just feels like a third expansion pack for Hitman 1. Whether or not this will be an issue to you will depend on how much Hitman you've already played. I didn't really care that much because nobody ever does a gameplay loop like this and so the game still feels fresh, but it's just a little bit disappointing to see that there's been basically zero innovation within this trilogy in four years. And then there's the other smaller nitpicks that came up. The game railroads you into playing stealthy, which you might not like. The dialogue could stand to be a lot more interesting, especially because you need to listen to it to find mission stories, and so could the overarching story. The game crashed a few times in the Argentina level, the AI broke in the Chongqing level, and it didn't wake up again until I threw a coin. And then the one really weird thing about this game is that there's certain things that feel like they should be mission stories, and they're either not triggering or they don't exist at all. Like this lawyer in the Argentina level here. If you hide his body and take his disguise, you eventually get in a situation where you can easily kill your target and hide his body without being seen. That should definitely be a mission story, but it isn't. And I'm not sure if it's because the game is buggy, or if the story just wasn't written into it. Taking everything into consideration though, Hitman 3 is an easy game to recommend. It's intelligently designed, it's replayable dozens of times over, and it delivers on the promise of complete player agency, just like the last two games did. Even with only five levels, plus a final level that doesn't really count as a Hitman level, you could play this game for a hundred hours and not get bored. And then when you import the levels from the last two Hitman games into this one, well, it only gets better. You just might want to wait a few months until EO fixes their progress carryover website, or until the game releases on Steam.